I'm fed up, folks. I'm fed up. I'm fed up. You don't. You honestly don't know what it's like. I'm fed up. I'm. You know. I'm fed up. Why? Look. I'm. I'm fed up. Have I told you that already? Yeah. I'm fed up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. <clears throat> yeah, you can see that radiogram scratched to death, can't you? You can see that. It's mine. Yeah, it's mine. <laughs> no, you don't understand. It's mine. I'm fed up, folks. I've got a problem. And I need you to help me with the problem. Perhaps you can help. I have, uh, I have a problem with valves, right? Um, it's between me and Val's. I think my Uncle Paul had the same problem. Uh, obviously, my Uncle Paul were in the much worse stages. For those that have seen the videos, he had it really, <laughs> he had it really, really bad. Unfortunately, he couldn't get any help. We believe he died because he fell like and he hit his head, but possibly it's not the case. Perhaps he threw himself, perhaps he threw himself onto, you know, you don't know, do you? <laughs> you know, you don't know, like, you know, everybody knows him as a person that's into vowels, so before you know it, everyone starts, oh, I tell you, Paul will want that, send it round to Paul, send it round to Paul, before you know it, you're a three bedroom house and it's full of stuff. <sighs> now in my case, I have to buy my stuff, now you can see clearly there, ladies and gentlemen, this lad here wants 30, 30 pounds for that. And it's scratched to hell. Let's just take a look at the piece species while he hasn't taken it off. Uh, what do you think of that? Is that sexy? Are you impressed? Oh, are you impressed? Just be careful how you uh, how you mention you're, you're, you're impressed. You might be seeing it in this very video if you carry on with your attitude. You like that, Gerard? Are you impressed? Well, just carry on with your attitude. You might be seeing it. <laughs> oh gosh, are you impressed? It looks a bit rusty Beverly on there, if you don't mind me calling you Beverly on top of that screw it should be chrome. That tells you it's been in a moist damp atmosphere. You know, a little bit of uh, rusting going on there, isn't there? Just ever so slightly. Gives you an idea that it's been in slight moisture conditions. I, that's not my internet, folks. For whatever reason, we're not getting that. We're only getting, but it's, he's only he's only looking into record deck compartment, and that's it. That's the four pictures, right? And that's that's it, right? So now then, so if we read his uh, what they call it, I've just been speaking to it, fella. Vintage stereophonics. L listen to that word, folks, because I like it when it says that. Take a notice of this monitor, by the way, down this side. It has a problem. Can you see it? Uh, we've got uh, five computers in this house, you know, and we're short of monitors. Um, please don't be sending me any. I'm not that short of them. Anyway, uh, cut a long story short, right? Vintage stereophonics. Take the word out, right? Uh, and it's... Uh, a monarch, a monarch, some stereo, radio, and record player for sale requires <laughs> requires a new plug. <laughs> requires a new plug, folks. It'll have a red and black main lead on, right? It probably hasn't been plugged in for five hundred and eighty-seven years. Now then, he's got it here now at thirty quid. But I've been looking through his previous adverts, and he he first of all put this pile of rubbish up here at 40 quid and it didn't move now the thing is folks um you know uh, you're taking some on like that obviously there could be anything wrong with it and i only want it because it will have a valve amping it will have a valve amping i can tell by the look of the chassis there that the look of that and the cabinet itself and the deck that's with it you know, if it had had a quite modern type BSR, it could easily be a solid state animal. But it's a valve animal. And, and it's a stereo valve animal. And um, if it sounds, I'm not being funny, but if it sounds as good as that Murphy that I bought the other day, I can't resist buying them at £20. Yes, £20. I know it says 30 He first of all put it up for 40 He didn't sell it. And then a few days later he's posted it again and here he is again now at £30. So I rings him up, gets talking to the lad, Simon the calling. 
and uh, he's miles away from me folks this is the upsetting thing he's in Manchester he's in Manchester right and um, he's well he's this way while my internet gets going I'll give you an idea of what, what I've got to do to get to this fella right always look small and <laughs> I can remember once and this brings back memories you know of uh, my sister's daughter my sister's daughter she's right pretty she looks like she's walked off front of a model's magazine and you can't say no to her well you can't even if she's ugly can you but Uncle Mark will you take me to pick a car up of course I will love where do you want me to take you she said oh she said it's only that far up map <laughs> I'm telling you, she did, she said it's only that far up map. Oh, I said, right. Anyway, uh, where is it then? She said, Manchester. Well, Manchester is a very big area, depending on where you're going. And uh, that's where I'm going there. I'm going, I've got to go to Stockport to pick that pile up. I'm going more or less to Stockport area there, right? And I live right over here, ladies and gentlemen. 4,700 miles away. Oh, you'll have to wait. I'll have to pan back. Yeah. Right there, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway. I won't zoom, but there's no point, is there? But you know what I mean? It's only that far, though. Don't worry about it, folks. It's no... Anyway, I've rung the lad. And, er... Uh, he came down on telephone to £25. I told him no. I said, look, it's going to cost me about a tenner to get there. You just keep it on You just keep it on here on Gumtree and someone will come along and pay you your £30. I said, I'm being rude enough as it is offering you 20 But I said, that's as far as I'm going to go. I said, so if you can't sell it in a couple of weeks, give us a ring and you'll have £20 waiting for you, I said. Right? And then he changed his tune then slightly then when he knew that, uh, you know, that were deal and that's what I were going to go for and that were it. I told him, I said, I just bought one and I said, he said it's for restoration. I don't want to restore that. I don't want to restore it, folks. I haven't got room for that. I've hardly got room for a valve. But, 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 but the point is, I'll tell you this now, folks, right? That will have... Uh, uh, that will have the main transformer that's worth £20 in itself. It really is, folks. Go price them up. If you're into valve equipment, that main transformer that'll do 0, uh, 270, 270, 6.3 litres, you'll be paying 30 quid for that. £30 alone. Then you've got your rectifier, right, which will be an EZ80 or an EZ81. And then you've got your two complete separate power amps. Um, they will be tubed. They'll either be EL84, They'll either be ECL82s, they'll either be ECL86s. Uh, I would imagine that's what they're going to be. They're going to be somewhat similar to that. And then you've got whatever preamp stages. If it if it is very similar to what I'm what I'm playing with now in my Murphy, uh, and it's using the terminology stereophonics, not just because it's stereo, but it because it because it uses the same stereophonics amplifier then you end up with two transformers again two audio transformers again two more ECL86s and another power supply I say that because the ECL86s are worth £10 each right so if you look at the ECL86s at £10 a piece right you got to rest for no one yeah apart from going to pick it up that's my motto anyway and that must have been Paul's one man's rubbish is another man's treasure and all that. Anyway, I've rung the lad, so uh, I won't be taking my camera with me all that way, folks. I've no time for uh, talking and cameraing. Uh, so next time you see it, <laughs> it'll probably be, we'll be doing a, a dusty cobweb, dusty cobweb, a uh -uh, dusty pan, dusty pan. Well, as you've just heard there in that clip there, folks, uh, Later on this evening, I'm on my way to Manchester. <laughs> Madness. No, I really am going to have a word and see if I can get tablets for it. Anyway, <laughs> getting on to my other sketch, uh, what they call them, 
what they call them now? What they call them now? Stereophonic. Getting on to my other stereophonic here. Um, I played it for the last time this morning and uh, and it sounded absolutely great. I'm really impressed with it. Um, I've been reading some of your comments and um, uh, you know, I always read all your comments, always. But, uh, you know, some people say stuff, you know, that uh, make you, make you uh, want to mention the fact, you know, and Fred, it was Fred wrote to me and said, uh, am I going to build this into a kit is is this the one i'm going to build into a kit perhaps i've chose this one i think someone else mentioned it as well i think it was you gary wasn't it well uh like i said earlier lads uh, ladies and gents should i say because uh, special agents watching um it you know sound quality is everything i think I really do, that's why I have a Rackalar A17, one of the ugliest looking radios known to man, but still at the end of the day it's what they do. Uh, I think a lot of people feel that about Stock and I and FDXs, although some people think they look lovely, I personally think they're very ugly radio personally, uh, but I think they're a fantastic radio and that's what's important. You know, you know, you, you know I don't care what, how nice the car looks, I really don't. Does it go all right? Will it get me from A to B? You know, um, and uh, when it comes to Wi-Fi amplifiers, in this situation, this is just a very QRP valve amp. But I reckon this is a fantastic amp for learning on. I really do. And this is why I've gone to trouble to buy that other one, hoping that... Uh, I really am hoping I'm going to get another one of those and another one of those, right? They'll be worth me 20 quid, right? Now, the power supply, I've been giving it great interest, right? Because this looks totally different from the one that's in the Decker, but it's identical uh, on how it works. You know, voltages and everything, it's absolutely spit identical. So spit identical that the rectifier that I said to you on the other video is probably an equivalent to EZ81 well I still can't make out the number on it but I checked all its pin connections this morning and it's wired exactly like an 81 or an, or an EZ80 so I said to myself go and get an 81 or an 80 so Fred I went and got your EZ81 out Fred that you sent me plonked it in there because I know yours works Fred I've tried it if you remember plonked it in there I've only, I've got, I've only got that one spare because them other ones are in them items you know that uh, Ferranti radio if you remember Fred anyway I put it in there and uh, it walked straight back up perfect I was already playing it you see and I put the EZ81 and it walked straight back up perfect supplied all voltages perfect so that's what the valve that were in there now then, uh, so I, I'm looking. I'm hoping this radiogram tonight is a valve set, of course, because I might be wrong, but I think it is a valve set, and I'm hoping it's got a similar transformers impedance matching to these guys, the primary windings and the secondary windings of these two transformers is absolutely crucial to working with these two tubes. Uh, the windings must be must be uh, perfect for, for that job you know uh, they're physically small as you can see they're not very big transformers but they've only got to handle three watts of dissipation at the end of the day aren't they and they run absolutely flat cold when the amp has been running five hours non-stop producing what i would say is definitely half of half of its working power on each channel i.e uh, definitely a good two i would say personally from what you can hear from them speakers i'd say i've been driving it i, I really would believe it sounds like i've been running it at 10 watts a channel i swear it does but i haven't been running it into distortion at all and uh, i'd say i've been working it relatively hard a good a good uh, just over half on and uh, and and they run flat cold tubes run red hot as they should but they run flat cold and uh, but i've noticed some serious issues that make me want to discharge its caps as i have done disconnect it all as i have done and um and uh not only i want to draw the whole thing out i want to draw exactly how it's connected here i'll only be drawing one amplifier i.e 
one transformer, you know, and one of the tone controls. I'll be drawing it all out because there'll be slight, there won't be any differences between left and right. But it's important to get the layout correct. One thing I, one thing I've read a lot about is that people, when they're building homemade amplifiers, they get the layout wrong, and the amplifier ends up buzzing. It's buzzing its rocks off and going into self oscillation and all kinds of things this also on this animal is crucial because these two tubes here because uh, because the driver stage is running in quite high gain apparently it's crucial that lengths of resistors and stuff like that are at the certain lengths and and uh, and in the right path you know, in the right path at side of other cables or uh, like heater chain, for example. If the heater chain isn't wired up right, it can easily uh, it can easily get uh, you know uh, it can easily uh, it can easily cre create really serious problems for them PAs when it comes to self oscillation and numbing and stuff. You know, and uh, picking uh, mains up because you see the the the. Uh, the uh, AC, the uh, the eaters operate directly from the transformer in AC, so you can cancel out you can cancel out some of the magnetic fields that's generated by the heater wiring the heater wiring itself, and that's done usually by twisting it at, at certain uh, certain uh, lengths apart from you know a, half an inch apart just putting a twist in the wire and that apparently that but you've got to do it in an order each chain wiring's got to run on side and stuff like you see this wire tucked up at side it just looks for no but in some cases they can be crucial why they're in an area you know but anyway I just want to lay it all out, like these controls, I'm not going to be using them on my amplifier, obviously I wouldn't dream of using them, but I need to know the values of them, and um, you know, I want to know exactly how they're connected in this, uh, I don't want to spoil its integrity in any way, now then, uh, this must have been one of the early valve amplifiers that started to have a circuit board, as you can see, because this is actually a circuit board that you see here and this holds all the resistors for hot screen, cathode and everything uh, anodes and everything and grids and everything all all in one big bank for left and right and so in, in, in a way folks you can look at all them resistors like really they're doing four amplifiers because you've got two driver stages and two power amp stages all mixed up in there for both sides so they all want sussing out exactly what goes where yes i do have paperwork what looks like identical but i won't know until i look at resistors and check all the values look at the uh things i've noticed here that's absolutely oh really upsetting and you'd really want to uh, where where well can i get to it I'm just trying to find out where it is, folks, because I've seen one of these that's split. I can't actually see it on here, but uh, there's one of these split. Now, I don't exactly know what job them resistors are doing or caps, because some of old type stuff, they can look like caps. I can't really see it now. Is it you? Give up focus, you bloody article. One of them, anyways, one of them's got a serious crack in it, like it's swelling up. It's one of these big fellas here. And I don't know, anyway, but if you look at all of the components there, they're all very untied. This is all original, folks. I haven't done any of that. But you can clearly see it's very, very untidy. It's really, uh, it's really filthy and it's grubby and all sorts. And um, like I say, you know, I might be using them transformers, but they won't be going in my amplifier like that. But what's lovely about this whole arrangement is that the terminals for the transformer are at the top. Some cases, the white, they've got wires coming straight out at transformer into the centre at transformer and going straight in. And if they cut at certain lengths, you know, you're stuffed. In this case, once I take all that crap off, you know, these uh, caps and resistors and what have you here that's discoloured and what have you, they'll be all identical on the same, so we can easily work out the... It, like I said, this is perfect working. 
and good thing about working on old like this is it's totally stereo so you've got one complete left and one complete right they're both identical really they might be laid out different but they will be connected same so this this colored resistor here whatever it is if you pull one end up and read it chances are they'll be identical to bill uh, you've got to get to the closest to what value you can see measure it in this case they're both working so like I say, we'll be ditching all of this once we know what values of them all. This cap here, I believe, is in tone control. Um, look at it, it's a really awful thing, in it? But it sounds, uh, it sounds really quite good, doesn't it? It wants salvaging. That's how it was built, folks. But it wants making into some, you know, uh, you can see what I mean there about first printed circuit board, but look at that. <laughs> Just look at it. British made, eh? Did, did people say that we were good at building stuff in Britain? Ah, well, he wanted to go for his break, did Tony. He really, really wanted to go for his break. Come on, Tony, I'm waiting. Yeah, hang on a minute, hang on, I'm coming now. I'm just doing this. Brew it together and brew it straight on pile. Betty got out of it then. And then it was Frida, and then it was Alan. Alan's a right big headed get, thinks he knows everything. He didn't even set it up or out, just threw it straight out, did Alan? <laughs> and like you say, Fred, 50 years on, who knows? I'd just like to say, by the way, Fred, that that fella that I bought this off was the son, and he was about 35 years old, 40 years old. He says he's never heard it working. He can never remember it working. It was his father tells him that apparently it were not, but he's never heard it working, so what do you think about that? So, uh, I don't, God knows how long it is since it's been alive, but hey, I bet, I bet if it could talk the amplifier, it'd be surprised that it's here 50 years later and some fruitcake's messing around with it like it's a, a thousand pound thing, if you know what I mean. The time I'm spending on it, playing with it. But I... Uh, I'll learn a lot more about how you can have a driver, a driver in one amplifier and then passing its audio straight on to, to the next grid and then that working as a final. I just think that's fantastic. You are completely eliminating a completely separate preamp. Now for an audio file, a single ended amplifier, they reckon that they sound the very best. Some of the very uh, top audiophile people reckon that um, single-ended amplifiers sound the best simply because they've got less components in them. That's why nearly all, all top audiophile people don't have tone controls on an amplifier. They don't have bass and treble. They don't go for no stupid nonsense that I've put on there with them magic eyes and stuff. And none of that. They're just interested in the sound. No wrong with that. They're just interested in the sound, and uh, and I am as well. But I don't mind some nonsense, and let, but if it alters sound, I don't want the nonsense. But in this case, you can play around. But the point is, that's exactly this is great for. I want to know. I want to know. Um, you know, I just want to. I just want to electrically understand this more and more and more uh, to get to know it. And if I can buy another one of those uh, with with another two transformers. I can set a state up then on my workbench whereas uh, where I can uh, uh, set a current limiting circuit up so that whatever happens while I'm practicing I won't damage the windings on the transformer the heaters as well as the high tension I'm going to protect them so that uh, so that I can't uh, draw I can't uh, you know I can't put any strain on the transformer That'll be one of my first jobs on individual supplies. And then, secondly, then I'm going to break one half of this completely out. Um, leaving, leaving one amp in, probably, probably leaving this fella in, and this outer edge one, because it'll be easier to get to. I'll strip all that out and uh, reverse engineer it and uh, copy out exactly how it goes, draw a diagram of it all, exactly how that one is. And then... Um, once I'm happy with that, I might just build that one amplifier on a piece of wood. Just that one amplifier on a piece of wood to check DC voltages and check that I've got everything correct. Then I'll put audio into it and see that it works as an amplifier, but just by using tones and generator, that's my plan. 
once I see that it works again as an amplifier using the components that's come out of here just building them somewhere else on a little board on their own are you with me uh, once it passes that sort of test then then I'll come and pull the other animal out then and then uh, and then I'll make a complete set of switching arrangement up with an auxiliary switch uh, sorry a, a mode switch I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a mode switch uh, and I might give it a record selector as well so we've got a mode switch and then a record selector and a tape monitor and a tape out so that we can record from it and everything and just use it as a normal amp I might just do that just for a laugh you know so we could use it because uh, it, it really does fill room up with sound so I'm going to get out of here now and then uh, next part of the video I'll show you this other radiogram when we get it okay but uh, that's what I'm doing for half an hour I'm uh, I'm going to uh, start to reverse assemble it uh, so say goodbye to it you, you're going to be you're going to hear this for a long time I hope you do get to hear it again <laughs> the plan is that you might get to hear it again but you might not you know because things change don't they this new radiogram could have an amplifier that floats me but more than this this goes on back burner for two years you know what it's like just before I do folks I'm just going to show you that again from a different handle I think it's appalling that it's come out electrically like that I've had to look at some connections you know I'm studying it as you do and I'm looking at some connections and I think how the bloody hell has this worked I'm telling you right see if I can hold my camera straight and uh, come back a bit it seems to like focus better when I get closer like that let it get its auto together and then come in let's look at now then what I want you to bear in mind is can you see the horizontalness of the resistors that's behind the vertical pole sticking downwards the resistors connecting from there downwards obviously well just look at the look at see how shape of them are, some of them are so close to its neighbours like these two guys in the middle that shot there can't get closer like Look at them, man! It's just appalling. Some of these, some of these, some of the, <laughs> you know, us CBs and and amateurs slag off radios inside for the soldering. You know, we do, don't we? And uh, some of these fellas are carrying three hundred volts. Some of these, you know, imagine that. Let's look, let's look at the neighbours. So, so, you know, I just think that's just. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> That's appalling. I'm trying to work out what this control's doing here. That's what my mission is, exactly as I speak. What are you doing? I obviously wouldn't turn it, but just looking where it's all connected, you know. Okay, another day, and uh, we've just got to have a look in here. <laughs> and then I'll, uh, you know, and uh, you know. <laughs> Just to know what I bought for me 20 quid. Okay, very happy with it, folks, so far. Uh, as, I, as, you showed, as I showed you earlier, uh, this dripping that's been going on, I'm directly now underneath that area here, and that. <laughs> that's what I had to look at. Anyway, um, this, this fella here, this fella here, which is... Uh, He is, he, he, this is this is where power supply comes back in the mains comes back in it's uh, it's high tension uh, it's high tension DC unsmoothed and then it comes in here and uh, as well it, uh, high tension anheaters and uh, this is the rectifier tube here and this is of course the uh, main reservoir you know and uh, it looks like it's this fella that's uh, that's been certainly probably one of these two it's directly underneath that area this is panel bulb uh, what uh, what used to uh, give record deck illumination underneath so it actually lives believe it or not it actually lives there believe it or not in cabinet directly underneath and uh, this is obviously above it and um, I say that because um, can clearly see there that that just couples straight off of one at valve holders which in reality works off probably pin four and five off a of heater supply off that tube uh, so uh, you know it's just uh, tells us straight away which is eaters and all of that 
And all I can find wrong with it, apart from that little minute blob there that's been leaking there, that you can see right in the middle of your shot there. Um, wherever it's come from, one of these I'm sure. Because uh, that's the only area that where wax could have been. It could have come from cat, but look at it, it don't come from there, does it? It's not been leaking from Fred. And uh, there's only these two guys here, and they're both to deck. These two guys are both to deck. And they're coupling up to one at pins here. It does actually look like some probably something to do with HT, but we'll probably see when we work it up one day. Anyway, all I can find wrong with it, apart from that, is the dial cord snapped. The whole thing is absolutely original, and I am not joking. I really do get the feeling I'm the first person to take the back off. I'm not joking either. Oh, banana plugs bent in a certain way. It looks all, it were all tidily fitted in. Just looked like it had been fitted by pros, you know. A um, couple of little things I've noticed here in the tuner section. Have you noticed this resistor here? Focus! Can you see this coloration there? Right, well, remember that, in reality, that lives at the bottom. So, as that's been getting hot, you can see, if you look just in the middle, it's been swelling up ever so slightly. And then, uh, whatever happens, it's been leaking downwards. Just getting at, like, a hot spot, probably. You know, I'm not bothered, because, like I said, that, all of that's in tuna section. Couldn't care less. All of that, what, obviously, all of... Oh, this is power supply. This is tuna section and switching. And this is uh, audio PA. Now, this is an interesting audio PA. Uh, let me turn it around and show you that. I suppose I better show you it first. You'd like to probably look at it, probably. Um, that's its tuning dial there on the uh, right there that you can see. Uh, that's its uh, obviously stereo balance. And there's all its switching there. VHF, long wave, sorry, short wave, uh, medium and long. And that's uh, gramophone. And that's off. And that's tone. And then, of course, major master volume. Now, uh, the interesting thing is, uh, look at them for bulbs. Now, they've gone all discoloured. They should be white glass, obviously. Look at that. Now, they've all gone discoloured like that. You can see my dial cord broke there, look. Come up, at, come up at spring at one end there, as you can see, that, that would have wrapped round to, round to, round here somehow. Uh, but that's uh, one end of it. <laughs> but it's still even wrapped round pulley, you know, proving that uh, it, it's someone that's just come along and twiddled it, right, and twiddled it, when these are sea solid, these rollers here. It's a common thing that once no one touches it for years and years, these rollers and what have you all seize up and go stiff. And they're all over the place and they're working as guiders, you know, for this uh, cord. They're absolutely, that sees solid, that one sees solid. E even uh, capacitor slightly tight, but only slightly. This is a bit tight. Someone comes along and turns it and it meets someone has to give, you know, and it just snaps the cord. The delicate anyway then rather than oiling all of that lot first and trying to free it but anyway it's irrelevant like i say i don't want that i don't want that tuner do i uh, but i am interested like i say in the values of this for me which is well worth going for is the two audio transformers there uh, there's one that lives at this side it's a single-ended uh, el84 transformer perfectly matched for an el84 and there's another one directly underneath them two guys and this, of course, the old PA is on a circuit board that looks obviously filthy. Uh, but no, it looks to be leaking on it or all like that. I wouldn't want to run them all of them like, but, you know, we'll still be able to act that up and work it up slowly and see if we can get it to come alive as it is. It's an interesting arrangement, though, because what you've got going here is... Um, these are final outputs here. That'll be left-hand side, for example, and that's right-hand side, power outputs. There's only one preamp, and the preamp's here. So uh, you've got uh, an EL84 here, EL84 here, and this is an EC83 preamp tube. Uh, but as you can see, there's only one. So one preamp into into two uh, single-ended power amps. And how it works is because the EC83 has got two grids. You know, it's got two valves, basically. It's a twin valve. Now, in many... Um, 
in many the, the EWC 83 is used used mainly as a preamp tube, and uh, and what they do with that they have the two they have the two grids uh, working as amplifiers, just creating a little bit more stage gain than, than its neighbour if you like, and then passing it on like that. And, and producing a gentle, beautiful quality audio preamp. In this case, what they've done is they've uh, taken control of both individual grids and they're running them completely as separate, two separate amplifiers. So one's working, you know, one grid's working as a preamplifier for that and the other one, the other grid's working as a preamplifier for that. Completely separate stereo, right? Now, uh, I've done a lot of reading about that earlier on. Uh, because EWC 83s and EL 84s uh, were going to be, and they still might be, the valve amp I'm going to be using because they get such a good reputation to all this. The EWC 83s, EF 86s, and EL 84s, they really work well together. All made by the same company, all designed by at the same time, all designed to work together, and they do so well. They're in loads of things that. There are loads of things that you won't believe, like uh, guitar amplifiers and all kinds of stuff. What the musicians think are the best. You know, uh, uh, some of the famous guitarists that we have uh, use preamps using EF86s and EWC83s and 12AX7s. 12AX7s is an EWC83. It's just the American name of it. Uh, but the point being is that all of that arrangement there the uh, two transformers that match them EL84s they were 25, 30 quid to me just then because the two and they matched did not really match but uh, they matched to an EL84 and that's perfect you know the impedance and the windings are perfect for uh, per, per 270, 300 volt high tension 270 volt high tension and uh, on them transformers and, uh, and uh, perfect so and uh, and like and then you've got your uh, you've got all your tubes there. You got uh, you know it's fully tubed up with everything. They're all mullard. I've got a full wavy EZ81, two EL84s, and an EWC83. And even all of these are all quite common. I'll show you what they are. Even a right right long mains lead that's obviously two core and everything. This was supply that supplies power supply. And uh, there's all your connections, like I say again, you know, right hand speaker. Notice no polarity wrote, wrote down. Have you noticed that? They don't even wrote down positive and negative, but speakers. Uh, and not rest with aerials and ground pickup coming back in. You know, one ground and left and right. And uh, there's your tube line up there. Oh, I'll come back a bit. Uh, but uh, that square box on on right there, that's your PA, your AF PA. You can clearly see there, look if you look, uh, if you can see uh, EWC 83, that's the driver, and then two EL 84s, and then EF 80, very, very common, EF 89 is common. This other mixer tube's common, this, uh, you know, uh, CH 81 or whatever, and that EWC 85, it's all quite all common. And uh, that's him, and I've just purchased twenty pound, twenty pound. So uh, anyway, one day, folks, on my videos, I'll wake it up for you. Uh, well, we'll see if it'll wake up in its state. We'll do a variac on it. I can't see it being that long. I'm itching to do it now. <laughs> you are, you know, because just by doing a variac, you know it. Uh, Letting it run even in idle, you know, it tells you a lot about what's going on. But I'll, I'll, I'll make you a bet that that, apart from its tuning dial, I bet you it all works up. How about that? I obviously, I haven't put power to it at all, but I will bet you that that will make noise straight away. I won't want to run it like that, but I'll bet you all you like that without doing any recapping or anything to it. I bet you all you like that. That'll make music, I'll bet you. I bet you that, I bet you that's alive. I'll catch you later folks, that's the end of this video. You've seen enough of this and I've babbled on for enough. Tap tap, and I'm gone.